Welcome everyone. This is step six of the uh, building a, a rug application using Langchain.js. So uh, let's move forward. Um, in this step, we are going to be turning our uh, documents that we loaded from the PDF in the previous steps uh, into uh, uh, vectors or embeddings and then storing them on a vector store. We're going to be using the memory vector store from Langchain. So we don't need to install an external, uh, use an external service, an external vector store, or install some other um, vector store. It's a lightweight, simple solution just to experiment. Um, just keep in mind that every time you are going to restart your application, the memory vector store will be, um, uh, you know, blank. So you'll have to um, and enter the information or store the information every time you. Uh, you load the program, which is exactly what this does. This this code is doing. Um, so uh, first of all, we need to, we have this new import. Uh, you can run npm install just to be um, sure that you are uh, you have all the npm packages installed. Um, and then the next thing that is required for this. Um, uh, for this step, let me close it down. Is a new, uh, is another model from uh, Olama. Uh, I'm using this old mini LM, which is going to be used for the embedding. So, this is a model that turns uh, text into vectors or embeddings, embeddings as they are called. Um, so, make sure that you have this downloaded and installed through uh, Olama. The way that you do it is uh, first of all, you can run Olama list to see what uh, which models you have downloaded. As you will see, I already have this embeddings model installed on my system and it's pretty lightweight. Um, if you don't have it, you will go to the uh, Olama website, search for this model, uh, and then find the appropriate copy the appropriate command. So you can use the uh, 22 million parameters or maybe a uh, the 33 million parameters, uh, whichever you choose, of course, the more parameters, the better. You will copy this command, copy it on your terminal. So, llama latest, for example, I'm not going to run this because I've already downloaded this, um, and you will have your model uh, up and running. Also, make sure that you have llama uh, running. You can see my icon here, the Olama icon here. So install the model, uh, download it, and then let's move forward to see what the code is doing. So what we've added in this um, in this code is inside the async init function, which basically does all the work for initializing and setting up our RAG application. Uh, I've added this step. So this is initializing uh, the Olamba embeddings class, which is basically a, a special class provided by Langchain uh, that lets you provide a model, a special embeddings model. There are many uh, embedding models from Olama. This is just one that's uh, quite lightweight. Um, so this is how you initialize and you get a, an embeddings model ready to be used um, in the vectorization process, so turning text into vectors. Uh, once we have this initialized, uh, we store it in a property called select embedding that we are going to be using in um, uh, the next step. Uh, after this uh, embeddings initialization, we are awaiting this asynchronous method called create vector store. So let's go here. This is basically the method that will be creating the vector store and also vectorizing the uh, the documents or the text that we have loaded from the previous step. Um, so let me scroll down. Uh, we're just console logging the step and then we are using the vector uh, memory vector store from documents. So basically we're using the class that we uh, imported from the Langchain uh, library. And then it has a method called from documents. This is an async function, so we have to await. Basically, this does two things. First of all, it initializes a vector store and also uh, in, uh, inserts some um, uh, documents 
uh, which will be converted, of course, to embeddings, to vectors. So this is uh, the first argument is uh, that we're passing to this method is the uh, the text, the list of texts that we have, and this is the embedding model that will be used for vectorizing. Um, if you well, if you watch the previous step, you will see that these texts contain um, uh, a lot of text uh, chunks from the PDF. So we loaded the PDF, the PDF was turned into documents, and then these documents were further split into smaller text chunks. So this um, variable contains these, these chunks of text. We're passing this text as input to the from documents method. We're passing this the select embeddings model, and these will initialize the vector store and turn all this text into vectors. Uh, after this is finished, this is an async uh, method, so we have to wait. This will be stored in this uh, class property. Um, now, let me comment a few lines here and test this step. If I uh, if I run my my um, PDF QA class and, and I, I I wait for the init function. Uh, we will go through these steps and we will see that we uh, also have this uh, this step six. We will also have a vector database uh, or a vector store. Um, so let me run this. You will see now that we are creating the document embeddings. This is the, the latest step. And uh, we're using this embedding model. So after this is finished, we will see the model. We can um, we can grab the DB property from our object, and which contains lots of information about the vector store. So DB dot appendix will give us dot model will give us the model that we we used, and uh, the memory vectors contains all the vectors. Uh, so basically, all the text chunks uh, were converted into vectors. You will see that we have fourteen embeddings, fourteen vectors. That's because the chunks that we um, that were contained in the in the text variable um, were just fourteen, also. Um, so we have the uh, the embeddings. Let me console log the um, db and also the embeddings and also the memory vectors just to take a look at what's happening let me console log, uh, comment this for now let's just take a look at the db to see what's so as you can see the db is like one large object uh, it contains a lot of things let me scroll up so this is a, a big object that contains a, uh, a property embeddings with some information about the vector store. For example, this is the information about the embeddings. Um, uh, we see the model that we're using and some other information. And there's another property called memory vectors, which basically contains all the, uh, the vectors. So we see here we have this text chunk. This is the text that um, is going to be vectorized or has been vectorized and is uh, uh, embedded or um, converted into a vector. So this property contains the vector version of this text. As you can see, all of the text chunks, um, all 14 of them have been um, included in the vector store. So you will see that we not only find the text version of its, of its text, um, but also the vector, the embedding, uh, and also some metadata about this particular uh, embedding and the uh, accompanying text. So all of these can be found in the um, uh, memory vectors uh, property. Let me scroll up once again. The memory vectors. Uh, let me just console log. We, we saw the embeddings, uh, which has some information. So now let's pick the first uh, embedding for from the memory vectors database, just to see to take a look at the first chunk. Now, as you can see, uh, we have, first of all, the text, the content for this first embedding. This is 
uh, the thing that we uh, that we use as an input to the vector store um, the text and then we get back an embedding so an embedding is just an array of numbers basically a vector which is a list of numbers and you have like around 300 something uh, numbers uh, this is the, the the length or the size of the embedding um, that we get when we use this uh, this model that I included the um, old mini LM depending on the embeddings model you might get larger or smaller uh, embeddings meaning in size um, and then we have some metadata for this embedding so we see the source this came from the PDF that we loaded in the previous steps um, this is the page number so this was this was the first page from the PDF so we get all this really interesting uh, uh, and helpful information about its embedding um, so this is how the text is converted into vectors or embeddings and this is how we find all this information in the vectory uh, in the memory vector store now in the next step I have like um, let me I comment these lines now once you have this database and you have a reference to this database through this DB property you can execute this similarity search um, uh, function so what this will do is it will uh, convert this text into a vector and it will try to find the most relevant vectors uh, inside the, the vector store so basically this is um, uh, the way that we we uh, use the vector stores we convert text into numbers or vectors and then we do some kind of similarity search and we get back um, the some some numbers that we set here for um, for relevant documents or chunks or embeddings so this will search for this text we can we can change this to anything we want and we'll get back two results you can change this of course to get one two three or more relevant uh, documents and, and in here as soon as we get the results I'm looping over the results and um, just to see what we get back so let me run this code you will see that uh, based on this text we found two uh, we got two uh, relevant documents um, this is because we just set the, the number two here uh, the first relevant documents is uh, comes from page number three uh, and also we get the lines and we also get another chunk of text which is uh, uh, coming from uh, page six from the PDF and it's um, uh, related to this text uh, from lines 1 to 17 so let me open the PDF to see uh, how we got this so this is the PDF so we asked for uh, file type associations and it searched through the vectorized version of this PDF and it got something that's related to file type associations on page number three so if I go to page number three we have this page which as you can see talks about file type association so this is a relevant result um, and also we get to see the lines in this page that are uh, related to this or are more related and relevant to our text search and also we got page number six so I'm three four five six uh, we have some things here like uh, we see the file type association text here associated with file type so this is another relevant um, page uh, based on our text query let's try another search let's say um, let's uh, let me search for um, let's search for ignoring files and folders so I will do something like how to ignore uh, let's say uh, some files and directories let me change this let's see what we get back using this text query from our vector store so now based on this text uh, that will once again be vectorized and um, compared with other vectors in the vector store and we'll get the more uh, the, the vectors that are closest to this or similar more similar to this text we get page number 10 and 5 I believe what we get here is like the most relevant documents 
um, at the top and the least uh, or the less relevant documents at the bottom. Uh, there's actually a score that we can get to see how relevant these results were. Now let's see uh, what we got from this, uh, like from this, um, from this text. Uh, I'm going to console log also the page content for each of these two documents. So we're going to also see the text. So let's see. We have the first document. Uh, as you can see, it's page nine, which has the title "Ignore Files and Folders." Even though we didn't use the word uh, "folders," we just used their directories it correctly found similar uh, pages and then um, we got like uh, let's see page 10 sorry this is page 9 uh, and then this is page 10 uh, and we got some uh, some results um, so this is what we get uh, let me go back to this. Uh, I'm going to comment this. Uh, so this is how we can see the relevant documents that we got from our search. And we can also uh, run, let me let me also comment this line and uncomment these lines. So we have yet another method available uh, to the Mac memory vector store. This is the similarity search with score. So basically, we're going to search uh, on the vector store based on this text string, get the 10 most relevant documents, and we're also going to uh, get a score. So how relevant each document is um, according to our to our text query. So using this, running this code, you will see that we get uh, the score here on the left and the page number. So you will see we get roughly uh, the same score up to up to this point so we get about like 60 percent so page number three is around 60 percent um, uh, relevant to the text query and then as we move down we we find other documents related to our search but they have a lower score so depending on the score you might want to set a threshold and get back the results that either are like above 50% or 60% or maybe even a more strict um, threshold um, and you can ignore everything that's let's say less than 50% or less than 0 0.5 um, and you get get some like more relevant or maybe some uh, more uh, uh, um, some better results or at least use documents that are um, uh, that have a, a high score so this is how this memory store, memory vector store is uh, is working at this point. Uh, please remember that this process will run every time you run this program. So every time I close the program uh, or it finishes its execution, the memory vector store is deleted, is no longer in memory. And every time I run this, it will uh, initialize the memory vector store from the beginning and turn these documents into uh, vectors. So this process might take a while if you test this with a, a large PDF. Um, so keep the PDF document small enough so that it doesn't take too much time to uh, to go through this process. Um, this is what this, uh, this step is doing. Um, and next we are going to be configuring a, a retriever and the next step to actually um, find some uh, relevant documents from the uh, from the vector store uh, but in a more advanced way uh, as always leave your comments feedback um, please like subscribe and i will see you in the next video thank you for watching